got a text from Danny that my 68 Southern Jumbo is ready to be picked up. Now, this is the first time that I've had the Fret Boss fix a crack on a guitar. Is that true? I think that's right. But I've also never heard this guitar. So, you come with me. You're going to hear it for the first time when I hear it for the first time with a fixed top crack. And this guitar is right at the tail transition uh, between good Gibsons and quite bad Gibsons. So, let's go to Stanton. So this Southern Jumbo is part of a collection that came from my friend Clay. Now my friend Clay passed away almost two years ago now, and his widow has asked me to help him sell these guitars. Now Clay's collection, there are a couple things that are really interesting. One of one of the things, like just as you see the collection of guitars that people tend to have by the end of their life, they usually kind of show some interesting threads and themes. So with his, it's really interesting. There are a couple of guitars that are almost the dream spec of everybody but they're still really cool and really kind of interesting choices so uh he had a 59 lg1 that looked amazing but it's not an lg2 and lg2 sound better and then he has a 1970 uh, martin in 20 which is still for sale and it's basically the willy spec well almost the willy spec uh you know trigger style guitar but with his it has the spanish headstock and it has the rounded bridge, it has the belly bridge instead of the straight bridge, and so there's just a lot of things about it. So, the third guitar, and the one that we're going to pick up today, is a 67 Southern Jumbo. Now, 67 is a rough time to be a Gibson acoustic. When you look at Gibson Dreadnoughts, the best time for those was like 1930s, that's the real heyday, pre-war, but they're round-shouldered through the 30s, the 40s, the 50s, and 60s. In the mid-60s, Gibson changed ownership again. Gibson has been owned by a bunch of different groups of people throughout the years, but they were purchased in the mid-60s and in the transition, combined with the boom of 60s acoustic folk music, kind of that folk boom, to keep up with production, just lots of things had to change. And so one of the things that changed was they went from round shoulder to square shoulders. And that's what this guitar is, which just makes it a bit less desirable for most people than a proper round shoulder. Even the fact that I call it a proper round shoulder, to me, a Southern Jumbo should be round shouldered. Square shoulder, they just, they're getting late 60s. So the other changes with those, and this one has avoided it, but the other changes when they went from round shoulder to square shoulder, is that they also go to double X bracing. So Gibson, when they were under new ownership, when they were bought by the Norland Corporation, Norland era Gibson acoustic guitars, basically this company came in saying, we have to have fewer guitars come back for repairs. And so they just over-engineered them. So that means thicker finishes, thicker wood itself for the guitars, and then also they just over-braced the inside of the guitars. Now, over-bracing and over-building makes guitars sound thumpy and uninspiring and not resonant. So most of these guitars don't sound that good, but this one is literally at the last moment before some of those really critical changes happen. So this one appears to be, it is square shoulder and it does have a pickguard with screws on it. So that's two things that might affect the tone to make it a little more stuffy sounding, a little more sterile sounding. But it's still a thin top and it's still single X braced. So I hold out a lot of hope that this guitar is going to sound awesome. I love Southern Jumbos. I've wanted a Southern Jumbo for a long time. Now this one is part of an estate that is for sale and this guitar will be for sale here shortly. But uh, I'm really excited to try it out. And I think that this one, yeah, that thread from Clay's collection is that they're all just almost the dream spec for almost everybody. But I think the flip side of that is that Clay was always really wonderful and frugal and eclectic. So it is a really interesting collection of guitars altogether. So anyway, if you're interested in either of these guitars, the two of the main ones that I talked about are that, that Martin N20. That's for sale in the shop. So that's jeremythegutarhunter.com slash shop. And then this guitar will also be there. I also have a 68 Deluxe Reverb with a drip edge. Another, from a different collection, from a different widow. But um, that's another piece of gear that is like just beyond dream spec, but is still an amazing deal. So anyway, I think one of the ways in which you can get amazing vintage guitars is to go just to the boundaries of when people and the quality, when people say that they're like no longer any good and you shouldn't buy those. I'm talking silver face amps. I'm talking square-shouldered Gibson Dreadnoughts. So anyway, 
Let's go to Danny's. And if you're okay with getting, getting yeah. your shots on this later, yeah, that would be good. I hate to do sure. that. Man. Yeah, it's a cool guitar, man. Okay. I mean, it looks killer. Yeah. Yeah, it's there, but it's not. Yep. Yep. Obvious. No, it's leveling good. It's um, re-glued the braces and put uh, two splints in. Okay. Cool. And just like super fine splints, and it's. Yeah. Woo, there it is. So it, it needs a little fine tuning, but it sounds like this guitar. You Dude, know, awesome. I mean, these guys sound like that. And, cool. Uh, yep. All right, I've got money for you in my pocket. Cool. Well, okay, so this is the first time I've actually played this guitar, and it's, the neck is tiny. Like, I, I knew that, and this is late 60s. Remember, this is transitional, but it's a very small neck. I think it's inch and nine sixteenths. So I have to measure it, but it's just small in all regards. It's narrow together, it's thin front to back, and, um, but I'm super happy with the repair for Danny, man. It's, it's a good one. He did a really good job. Now, it still has the wood insert on the saddle, which that's that can be problematic on these kinds of guitars. And it has the pickguard that's screwed on, so that's also a thing that's not ideal. But it doesn't seem to be buzzing, doesn't seem to be rattling, and then the crack is done. So this guitar has, I mean, one crack in the top, but that's not the end of the world. It's fixed. It's not going anywhere. Danny's an amazing repair person. And uh, other than that, I mean, the guitar's in really clean shape. Like, I can't get over just how clean and tidy this thing is. So serial number 511369, uh, late 67, early 68, I believe. I'll double check it. But anyway, I'm super excited about this guitar. And so thanks for watching this video. I'm Jeremy, I'm the Guitar Hunter. That's Danny, that's the Fred Boss. If you're in the western side of Virginia, need an amazing guitar repair person, I, I know of no one better than Danny. And I can't recommend him highly enough. I'm super happy with this. And uh, yeah, this guitar is exciting and is gonna be up for sale here soon. So yeah. I'm happy.